Good morning everyone, welcome back to the Outpost and Red Bush Primitives. Um, I've got my good friend Jeff here, he came down to the Outpost to help me out for several days and believe me, we've knocked out quite a bit of work, so I really appreciate that. Um, as you can see, we had a display here of fire starting materials. We're getting ready to cook breakfast and uh, what we did was is we used uh, one of these cakes that Jeff makes. You want to explain to them how you make this cake? I call it a fire muffin. So all of it, it's a cupcake liner. I put salt dust and wood shavings in it, and then I use a double boiler and I melt down some uh, paraffin wax and pour in it. So what I did was sometimes without a match, it's kind of hard to get the the paraffin wax going. So what I did was is I shaved off a little bit of fat wood, which actually the uh, chemicals in that fat wood they just fire right up and of course I used a striker um, but as you can see the fire went really well and no problem just got to make sure you got some dry wood to put on top of it but yeah so we're going to talk about all these different things here shortly but we're going to go ahead and get some breakfast on we just wanted to uh, let you all know what we were up to today with all this big spread that we had going out here. Um, got my good friend, like I said earlier, Jeff here from uh, Red Bush Primitives, and we're going to talk about different ways to start fires. We're going to talk about uh, the atlatl, and we're also going to talk about uh, flint napping. He's going to demonstrate some of that. It's kind of a rainy day today. I might be able to throw a log on the sawmill later on this afternoon, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and enjoy our meal, and then we'll talk to you about different ways that we use to start fires. Hey guys, you know, this uh, video is kind of a partnership because some of you are watching from Red Bush Primitives, some of you are from Smoky Mountain Outpost. But uh, anyway, what we wanted to do, like I had said earlier, is talk about some different ways uh, that we use to start fires. Jeff has brought a lot of things with him that we're going to take a look at today. And the first being is uh, how we start fires. So I'm going to let him explain some of the stuff that he's brought and how he uses that. So you saw us start a fire with the, I call them fire muffins. So I build these at home to start my wood stove all winter long. It's paraffin wax and wood shavings. And uh, it doesn't take a spark from the ferro rod really good, but like you saw, if you scrape some fat wood on it, then it will, uh, it will catch fire good. Of course, you could start it 
with one of these fairly easy. Yep. Okay, but you may not have one of these with you. The, the main thing about it is you have an extended burn to get the rest of your kindling and everything going. Yeah. So, uh, so ferro rod, that throws sparks, that's a good starter. Now one of the ways I do a lot of times is I use a piece of steel and a piece of flint and char cloth. So char cloth is just uh, any cotton cloth. You put it in a tin, stick it over the fire. You have to have a hole poked in the tin and it'll smoke. It just, it's an incomplete burn. So it's just all the carbon and it'll catch a spark really quick off of the uh, flint and steel. <clears throat> so basically what happens is the flint is harder than the steel and those little sparks coming off of there are actually slivers of steel coming off. If you take a piece of your char Take it right up into the camera. Hold it still for a second. So now once you had this, you'd have to have a tender bundle to put it in. I'm not sure this tender bundle bundle will it may work. I scraped it off a wet dead cedar here this morning. We're almost there. So, now that cedar came off a tree. It's been raining all night. But you saw it light up. So that's pretty much how it works. There's, there's some type of flint anywhere you go. Now, some flint's better than other flint. But... Uh, you can also spark off, if you have a carbon steel knife, you can spark off the back of your knife blade, too. You want to tell them about these little things that you got? So this is another fire starter that I have. This is a straw. I took a pair of pliers, pinched the end, and burned it with a lighter. Then I took some cotton balls and Vaseline. Impregnated that Vaseline in a cotton ball. Pushed it down in there. I used a shish kebab skewer. Pushed it all down in there. Closed the other end. So now that's waterproof. All I have to do is cut the end off, squeeze out that, fluff it up a little bit, and any spark that hits it is going to ignite. And it's also a, uh, it'll just let your fire burn for a little bit longer. I use these a lot on canoe trips and stuff. Um, we're just kind of mixing and matching here as we go. I think you guys have watched me before a lot of times when I start a fire. Uh, something that you've got readily available at your house that you could actually put in a bag or in a, a little tin like this, which is an Altoid tin, is dryer lint. This right here is flammable. It's just a lot of wool and different things, material, and I pinch off a little bit and it'll take a strike, you know, maybe first, second, third try and I can get it going long enough to get some drier material like this on it and uh, some very fine small dry twigs and stuff and, and it will light a fire just as well. Another thing that I use a lot which is readily available around where I'm at and especially the yellow pine trees is where I find the abundance of it. Uh, I think it's probably due to the fact that they lose a lot of their limbs uh, and a lot of the limbs are low to the ground but uh, this right here is pine rosin and you can see all that liquid right here it's just on, outside on the bark and um, it's the same tree that this fatwood that I get comes from but this stuff right here just takes a little piece and it burns like tar um, I think what happens is when the tree gets damaged a limb or something like that falls off it oozes this stuff out because it gets really hard. You've probably seen people melt this down and use it uh, to like seal something because once it dries it will get hard. This right here is pretty soft because it's so thick but I've also got some right here that I keep in this little tin just like this 
So Richard was talking about his tins. This is my tin that I use for my flint and steel. So inside flint, steel, and char cloth, but also not today, but also there's a lens in the top of it. So if I had the sun shining and I could shine that, focus that beam on my uh, char cloth and get an ember started that way also. Um. Now this is some of the same flint that you can use mm -hmm. for striking. Okay, these, and if I'm not mistaken, this is readily available around this area. They call this black chert. It's a, it, this is actually day site, but yeah, there's chert around here too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you want to show them some of the things that you made out of that stuff? So this is, like I said, this is day site. So these are spalls of it. Uh, this is Burlington Chert, so there's just all different types of, uh, this is just, the red one is just glass. Uh, can you all see that because it's white? So <clears throat> That's just red glass. This is another piece of glass, it actually has a white tip on it. So unless you go out and get this yourself, it's pretty expensive to buy. So there's another piece of glass. So a lot of times what I'll do, this here is obsidian and it's almost translucent. This comes from uh, Washington State. So obsidian, obsidian is the sharpest thing on earth. So when, when you break this, it breaks to the single molecule. They actually were doing, uh, I think they still do some eye surgeries. They use an obsidian tool because they haven't been able to replicate, replicate sharpen to the single molecule. So razor, razor sharp stuff. Another piece of day sight turned into a blade with an antler handle. And when that gets dull, you just dress the edge up again to break some chips off. So the way I do it, the way I make a lot of these is I buy what they call a preform. The tools are pretty simple that they use. Uh, antler. That's just uh, that's a tip off an elk antler. Copper. So that's just a hickory twig. And it's got a piece of copper in it. You take that copper and you hammer it with a hammer, it makes it harder just by hammering it. And then you can file it off and, and do that. And then you have to abrade it. Um, I'll show you all that when we start, when I do a little bit of that. Well, we're gonna take a little bit of a break here and we're gonna get set up because if he's gonna show you some flint napping, we've got a tarp that we need to put down on the floor so that we don't have all those shavings and things like that laying everywhere so we'll be right back with you all right welcome back everybody so I'm gonna do a little percussion napping I am by no means a napping expert or anything like that I kind of like to do it uh, I kind of consider it as therapy you sit down you start working on it and that's all you really think about so like I said earlier rock is hard to get rock is expensive from where I am from so I don't do a lot of percussion I do some, uh, most of the time I do pressure flaking, so I'll show you. So I start off with my rock. I'm looking for a, uh, for a ridge, and then I've got to build a platform. I have to abrade it, it's like shooting pool. If you don't chalk the end of your pool cue, it's just gonna bounce off the cue ball. It's all angles, uh, building the platform. So, there's a the flight. So I got almost off of that, not quite. So I'll move over just a little bit. That's a nice flight. Now, that's a flight. You could skin a deer with that. 
that's super sharp. Uh, a lot of times the knives and stuff that they used didn't resemble a knife. It was just a good sharp flake. So, and a couple more. So you can see that real quickly, I could go from a really nice piece of rock down to a really nice pile of little pieces of rock. So you just work your way around. Always start out to make the biggest blade you can make. Because you're trying to make a, if you're trying to make a big blade uh, and it breaks in half, okay, well now you got two arrowheads. Now what I'm going to do, I want a pressure flake on a, uh, this is a preform. So I'm doing the same thing as percussion, I'm just doing it in a smaller, smaller form. Once you get that big piece percussion down, this is what you would switch to. So that's pretty much it. So, real time, uh, let's just say, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. a little bit about atlatl. So this is this is an atlatl that I made. Basically, basically it makes your arm longer. You get a lot more a lot more oomph when you're throwing a spear. This is a uh, a wooden dart. This is made out of some river cane. It's got a uh, it's got a wild turkey feather tied on the top there. I've wrapped a little sinew around in here just to keep it from breaking out. But on the atlatl, there's a little spur that hooks in the top that rests on that little rest, and then you fling it. So I'll step out here and fling it and uh, show you what it will do. This weapon was uh, predates bow and arrow. The uh, Kill woolly mammoth, saber two tigers with these things. Uh, some states today you can actually hunt them. Okay, guys, he's going to stand right here, and what he's going to aim for is this tree. Baseball. Okay guys, he hit the corner of it. I actually hit it almost in the center, but it bounced up because um, the tree, you know, these are just like target tips right here. Um, but I'm sure if you had something that was very sharp, oh, yeah. it would have stuck in. But I'm sure with a lot of practice, you could actually get good at this. That was actually my first time. So, um, but yeah. That's kind of cool. So how many years old do you think these are? Uh, they still use them in Australia. They predate the uh, bow and arrow. Bow and arrow. Of course, so. I, I know that this earth hasn't been here 50 million years no. because it was only created. Five or six thousand years ago, yeah. maybe. But anyway, um, so yeah. At Lab, let me give you a close up of this piece right here. What is this rock? A counterbalance? They argue that 
There's some scientists have checked and said it doesn't make a difference, but it feels better with a rock on it. And if you want to do this at home, you don't have to have that fancy looking atlatl. If you, uh, you just go out in the yard and find a branch with a fork, cut it off here and here, sharpen that little fork tree, and you got an atlatl. There you go, straight from the outpost. Okay guys, you like our little camp set up here? <laughs> we, we tried to make it look like we were up in the woods because it's raining outside and it can't take the DSLR out there. Didn't want to get the GoPro out because the footage and the audio wouldn't be that well. So we improvised. We brought a bunch of sticks, leaves, and garbage up here on the, the uh, kitchen floor to do this demonstration for you. But um, So that is, uh, like he says, the atlatl. Uh, that was some demonstrations on flint napping with different types of material. Uh, then the different ways to start a fire. Uh, a lot of you may know all that stuff, you know, but there are people that don't. So that was one purpose of doing the video. So this has kind of been a little bit of a bushcraft at the outpost today. Which, you know, like we were saying the other day, when you live in the woods, a lot of times you improvise and you, you do a lot of bushcraft, which is, you know, using natural resources to do what you need to, to get done. But uh, certainly appreciate him coming and doing that. Be sure, if you're new to the channel or you're just tuning in or whatever, or you, if you haven't already, go check out his channel, Bush, uh, Red Bush Primitives. Um, he's going to be starting up a uh, bushcraft base camp on four different lots that he bought next to the lot that he previously owns, or that he already owns, uh, where his, his house is. So uh, y'all be you know can be looking forward to that if you like that kind of stuff. And uh, he also does a lot of do-it-yourself on his channel. So, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to pick all this stuff up here. And we're going to go down to that compost area. And uh, got a little fine tuning that we need to do down there. But before we go down there, we're going to run to the sawmill because we need to make something a paper towel holder. So, we're going to see if we can't whittle us out something to hold the paper towels. I've got an idea. I gotta get the bark off of this piece of wood though. So I'm gonna be making a paper towel holder uh, for the compost toilet. And when I seen this, it kind of gave me an idea. It may not work out, but we'll give it a shot to see. Look what the bear dog drug in. He's been uh, working on bear hunting. But he come in here and he said, Richard, that ain't going to work. He said, there ain't enough room when you mount that on there to drill that hole in that paper towel roll to go on there. He said, you're going to have to mount it this way and drill through here, give yourself plenty of room. And I said, you know what, you're right. <laughs> so that means that I'm going to have to drill the holes right here, which is fine, I can do that. I'm just going to have to buff this down right here. So I'm fixing to drill me a hole right here. So you know Jennifer, she's back teaching at school now. She hasn't had a lot of opportunity to come up here. She makes an appearance every now and then, which is good, and helps me out when she can, but everybody has come to expect her and her jokes. So I'm kind of having to help her out and fill in. She's become the outpost jester. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so you know Darth Vader, right? Do you know he was? Did you know he was married? Not much of it. You know what his wife's name is? Miss Vader. No, it's it's Ella. Yeah. Ella Vader. <laughs> Ella Vader. 
pretty good. You know, I was also, I was telling Jeff that uh, probably next spring, since I eat so many eggs, you know, breakfast, I eat uh, egg salad sandwiches, um, fried egg sandwiches and all that, that I'm probably going to next spring build me a chicken coop. So that'll be another roof that me and you're going to have to put on. <laughs> another job. If y'all haven't seen the videos, he's helped me just about put every metal roof here at the outpost. So. Yeah, next spring I'll be building me a chicken house, so uh, or a chicken coop. So I'll, I'll expect uh, you. To... Speaking of chickens, we got a chicken here. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because Colonel Sanders was asking to get to the other side. <laughs> <coughs> I knew that. Yeah. I, I, that. That's a pretty old one. I, I just about forgot that. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to have to round these off because I had to have room enough for that whole paper roll to go in there. So that's what I'm fixing to do. There's a paper towel holder. Now what I'm thinking about doing is I've got a just a piece of wood that was left over. I'm thinking about mounting a shelf right here. That way I can put my uh, toiletries on there. So what I'm going to do is that very thing. Alright guys, I know that this is tight quarters right here, but I've got a small shelf up here I'll show you in just a second. We've got the paper towel holder here uh, right now that is made just like everything else. We've got the toilet in here. Um, I'm taking the urine diverter home because I'm going to take some super glue and put a screen down on the bottom of it so nothing goes down in there. But yeah, we've got this set up and ready to go. And we've also got over here... I've got my um, peat moss right here and then of course right over here we've got our cedar shavings so all of that is ready to go and it actually smells kind of good in here because of those cedar shavings so let me move the camera now you can see that little shelf that I built right there I just used a piece of wood that was left over so we got a little shelf right there I will have a paper um, or toilet paper holder that will actually go right down here underneath this window and then of course I've got that cool little trash can right there when you step on this that thing comes open um, but I will have something for the toilet paper so there's a shelf for a few odds and ends 
Also, I've got another light, but this one right here is kind of cool because I got it because it was really cheap. But yeah, you turn it on and it provides some light in here. Because honestly, when you close this door, see with that door closed, it's a little bit dark in here. So, with this little bitty light, let me move it over here, we turn it on and it lightens everything up in here. But I actually have one that I want to mount on the wall right here. Uh, it just didn't come with any batteries, but it's got nine little LED lights in there. So when you come in, all you got to do is push the button and you're good to go. But I'll probably leave that one in here too. The only thing I really have left to do is I've got some hand sanitizer up there. That's the reason I put the paper towels here. That's the reason we've got that. Also, um, when somebody uses the facilities, the paper goods will go in that trash can right there. Um, that's the way I grew up. My grandfather, we, have a, we had a septic system. He didn't want it plugged up. So whenever we use the bathroom, we just put all the paper goods in a can somewhat similar to that. And we lived just fine. There wasn't really any smell at all. Um, but the only other thing really I have to do is put some shutters on these windows. Um, that way when people come in there, in here, if they want to turn the light on, shut the shutters, they can do that. But, uh, yeah, this project really turned out quite cool. So when I get that urine diverter, um, when I get the screen screwed in the, or glued into the bottom of it and get that in there, this thing is ready to go and it is functional. So... We, what what that meant was, yeah, that was another day. <laughs> I, I asked Jeff, I said, no, come on, I want you to be honest with me. Have I worked you too hard? He said, no. I, don't I know. have worked, though. I don't know if he's telling me Not the truth. Not too hard. But that's, I told him that that's my normal routine, so I guess you can tell by the videos. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching us um, do the... The bushcraft, you know, all of the different ways that you can start a fire, uh, the flint napping, the atlatl, uh, all the stuff that he brought with him and showed. Really appreciate you doing that and hope you guys appreciate watching it. Um, the compost toilet is just about done. I got some shutters to put on there and I, I was telling him that I think what I'm going to do, oh, whenever I get my hardware for the door, I'll put take the temporary off and put it on. But um, I was telling him that I think what I'm going to do is find me a couple of pine knots and bore a hole and stick them on that little latch that slides sideways. So it'd be like actually grabbing a door handle. Anyway, but uh, behind the scenes, we didn't film it because he's going to be leaving tomorrow and uh, we're going to go out to dinner. But um, we did put the door stops on the back. So if the door got slammed, it would stop. You know, it wouldn't go anywhere. So. We got that done, got the shelf put in there, got the paper towel hanger uh, fired up and going now. Got the, yeah, it, it's all ready. As soon as I fix that little urine diverter, I'm going to put a screen down on the bottom so nothing would flow down into that pipe. But, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. And if you haven't checked out his channel, go check it out, Redbush Primitives. Right here, styling, profiling. And, um, you know, there may be some things on there that you guys would enjoy watching. Uh, he's taken some video while he was here, so he'll post that on his channel. And he's got some new things that will be coming in the future there. So be sure to go check him out. Subscribe too, because guys, uh, you, when you subscribe to a channel, you know, and it's free, it doesn't cost anything. Um, it does help the channel as far as the algorithm goes. So um, if you haven't done that, you know, we'd appreciate it if you, if you do that. Uh, so anyway. You think you might want to come back, or, yeah, or, or have you had enough? No, I'll be back if you'll have me back. Uh, I might put be able, my put my RV spot over there so I can back my RV right in. I might be able to run down your old girlfriend. Think you'll find her? Yeah. You remember the one that uh, his girlfriend that used to live here in the mountains with one leg shorter than the other? Her name was Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. We hope that you have a great afternoon. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the Outpost next time.